In the fourth chapter of the book of John, we see Jesus and his disciples going through Samaria, which is phenomenal because the Jews in Jesus' day, they didn't want to have anything to do with the Samaritans. They despised the Samaritans. They looked at them as, as half-breeds and impure race, and they didn't want to have anything to do with them, but Jesus loves everybody, amen? And so Jesus didn't have any problem going through Samaria, and so they stopped there at the well, and it was Jacob's well, the very well that Jacob had dug, and so his disciples, they went on into, into town and they were going to buy some food for lunch. It was the, the noon hour. The Bible says the sixth hour, but we would call it the noon hour today. So it was in the middle of the day. And so there Jesus saw this woman at the well and Jesus spoke to her and he said, draw me out some water. And so this woman, she was surprised because a Jew was speaking to her. First of all, she was a woman. And so men just didn't go up to women back then and begin to talk to them. Second of all, she was a Samaritan woman. And and she knew that the Jews despised the Samaritans. And so she was wondering why, why in the world this man was uh, speaking to me. And so Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for some water. And she said, well, you don't even have anything to draw with. How in the world are you going to draw me some water? Are you are you saying that you're greater than my uh, our forefather Jacob? And so naturally Jesus is greater than the forefather Jacob. But uh, as Jesus was looking at her and he, and he said, this to her. He said, now, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for some water. And then she turns, he turns us around and he says in verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her after she questioned him about it. And you know, are you greater than our father, Jacob? He says in verse 13, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. You can get you a bottle of water or you can go to the faucet and draw out some water or go to a well, wherever you want to go. And you can drink that water. And later on in the day, you're going to be thirsty again. That's just the natural part. You're going to have to drink several cups of water just throughout one day in order to quench your thirst and hydrate your body so that you can live. But Jesus said that you're going to thirst again. Then in verse 14, he said, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up and to eternal life. Now, he was talking about the Holy Spirit right there, and the Holy Spirit is received upon the moment of salvation, the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We'll talk more about that later, but the moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit within you, and the Holy Spirit begins to produce life, and not just temporary life, but eternal life in Christ Jesus. And what did Jesus say that we have to do, we have to ask for it. Amen. That's what we have to do. We have to ask Jesus for that living water, the living water. And so she said, I want some of that. I want that water. I want what you have. And so Jesus said, now go get your husband. Now, Jesus knows all things. Jesus knew everything about us. The Bible says God even knows how many hairs that we have on our head, and God has to recount mine every single day. God knows everything about us. Go get your husband. And she said, I have none. And Jesus said, you've, been, you, you've spoken correctly because you've already had five husbands, and the sixth one that you say is your husband today, he's not really even your husband. So you're living in sin, and Jesus knew that. And that's the very reason that she was at the well at the 12th hour, at the, at, I'm sorry, at the sixth hour. Who goes to the well during the middle of the day? They go early in the morning while it's still cool and so that they can get that water. But she went in the middle of the day whereas to avoid all people because she was living in sin and she was living in shame because she'd had all these husbands and now the man that she was with now wasn't even her husband. So she was living in sin and living in shame and Jesus knew that. And Jesus, being the, the God of grace that he is in love and mercy and loving kindness, he forgave her of that and she understood that. 
And boy, she was so excited about the forgiveness that she had and the mercy that she had through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. She went back into her hometown in Samaria and now she wasn't ashamed to go out in public anymore. She went through the whole town telling everybody about Jesus. In verse 39 of John chapter four says this, from that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified he told me all the things that I have done. The grace of God brings us into repentance, but it removes our shame, wipes away our sin and removes our shame. I now stand with the Savior. And yes, I did all those things. I did it. But he wiped them away and he forgave me and he removed it as far as the east is from the west and he blotted them out. Now I'm not ashamed that I'm going to go tell the world who my Savior is. He gave me that living water and it springs forth in me a well of living water. And guess what? It doesn't ever run out. Praise God for his grace. Praise God for his forgiveness. Praise God for the living water that we have through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we receive. We receive it by faith. All we have to do is ask for it by faith. That's good news. I pray that you'd share this good news. Share it with others so that they can hear and they can receive. Share this video so others can hear. What time is it? It's time to share the gospel.